happen into eternal life. But I need to refer back to my salvation even when I'm going through trying times on the earth. Yes, Why Lord. would he give me yes, salvation Lord. so I can just starve to death? You know, or why would he give me salvation so I can just uh, not be all the time uh, tore up in the, in the conscience? Salvation is not that. Salvation is the good life. Hallelujah. Physically as well as eternally. But I have to believe it with the same tools he gave me at salvation. When I believed on Christ and I became saved, I refer back to that throughout life. Salvation, grace, faith. What can I do with these? I can use these to believe God for everything I need. Yes, Lord. I can say, God, I'm believing by grace through faith that you're going to uh, give me power over what, what seems to have power over me. You've taken sin out of my way. I shouldn't be taking thoughts of all this word when I know that salvation means more than anything I could ever obtain by my own strength. Yes, Lord. Salvation Jesus. is such an unbelievable thing that I have received. How can I not believe him for physical things? He told Nicodemus, how can you believe heavenly things but don't even believe earthly things? Yes, Lord. Why are we going to believe all about this, this eternal life, all about these streets of gold, but we can't believe him for physical things on the earth? My Lord. Why do we believe all these heavenly things which we never seen? But we are struggling in, struggling in the physical realm. That's what we need to start believing God in the physical realm. That, that makes uh, heaven more real. When I can act like it is so. He said when you pray, act like you already received it. Mm, thank right? you, Jesus. Mark 11, 23. When you pray, believe you have already received it. And you should have it. So I got to act like even though I'm not in heaven, I still... Uh, receive the benefits out of heaven today. While I'm living on earth, Jesus. I'm a benefactor of the, the heavenly things that God ha has for me. Yes, and and that is through Christ. Yes, Lord. He says in uh, 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all, after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father know it, that you have need, and he know down there need about what he say all things. these things. things. Oh, so, so what should I, I, I use my faith? You only use your faith not to seek out the things. You use your faith. Everybody say I use my faith for my righteousness. For my righteousness. I have a faith righteousness. It's something that I didn't do uh, by earning. I didn't earn a righteousness. It's called the faith. Righteousness. It's something that was given to me, and I have to believe that consciously by faith. And, and he said, if I can believe a faith righteousness, these things will be added. Look at 33. But what see. You have to be in that. <laughs> we Matthew in Rome, I mean, Matthew, Matthew 6. 6. Oh, okay. Matthew 6, we in verse 33. Matthew 6, 33. You know, this verse says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and it said, and his righteousness. So what do we seek? We, 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 we seek. And when you mean seek, believe. Mm -hmm. When you believe something, you, you have already uh, saw it. You, you already obtained. In other words, once I believe that my righteousness is secure, my righteousness is a fake righteousness, it's a gift, he said all these things will be added yeah. unto you. Now, it's, you Jesus. this is a lot I need to unpack. I need to understand, okay, when I live by, no, just should live by faith, mm -hmm. I need to understand that I'm righteous 24 hours, 7 days a week. My, my salvation is secure. Now, I, what I need to understand is how to use it to my benefit. If you know you're righteous all the time and God loves you above measure, He'll freely give you all things, what would that do to the labor of your hands? Yes, Lord. Right? Would, that make you, would that make you understand that, you know what, I, I literally am a, a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Just leave it unlocked. Look at this again. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yes, and Lord. all these things what, shall be added unto you. And we just seek, uh, I mean, believe by faith. That, but we, we have a, 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 a faith righteousness. A righteousness that came by gift. Yes, Lord. A righteousness that came by the blood of Christ. A righteousness that came by his crucifixion. Hallelujah. And all these things that we constantly need day by day. The Bible says he already know that. Yes, look, look, at, look at 32. And it means know it, E-T-H. Continually he know 
every day you gonna need something to eat or drink or you know mm -hmm. put on or he knows that already. So should I be worried about the things that God already know? If he got my best benefit, uh, my best interest in mind, what should I be doing all these this time I live on the earth? He already know the things I need. That's what thirty uh two says. So should I spend my time seeking after those things that he know I already need? Or should mm -hmm. I just uh, seek and believe that I have a fake righteousness? And in that righteousness, things will start will be provided through the labor of my hands. We know we have to work. He says, and all these things should be added unto you. So in this verse, he says not to seek after things, but seek after uh, righteousness. And that means... A, a, a fake righteousness, and that we, we get to that at salvation, but we have to believe that we are righteous. We have to believe that our righteousness is secure. We have to believe that our righteousness is forever. You know, Mom, we talked about that yesterday in Daniel. It's an everlasting righteousness. It ain't gonna never stop. It ain't gonna deteriorate. It ain't gonna be done away with. We have this for the rest of our life. Hallelujah. Now, what we can do is use the tools we have to live the good life, and those tools of faith. And they are grace. Let us in and Romans. Let us go, to, go back to Romans. Ephesians. We never did do Ephesians. Yeah, we did Ephesians uh, 2, 8, and 9. You know, grace. We are saved by grace through faith. Not of ourselves, as okay. any man should boast. We, we are, I'm learning throughout life that if you can understand your, uh, your salvation that was given to you by Christ... It, it, it contains everything you need for life. Hallelujah. In this salvation, like I say, it is grace and it's faith. And if I can understand what, it, what has happened to me in salvation, I can live off of it. How do I live off of it? Because I know that ain't going to never be taken away. If you can believe that your salvation is secure forever, and that you are always, no matter what you say or do, is the righteousness of Christ, what can you do with tools like that? Yes, Lord. You remember, grace is on everything I do. Faith is, is, is the way I live. The just to live by faith. That's what I see. Romans. Mm -hmm. go, go to Romans. We're here in here. In Romans chapter 5. And that was Ephesians 2 8 and 9. Right here. Mm -hmm. By grace. And then when it comes to things, remember, we seek his righteousness. Meaning, we have a faith righteousness. But most people want to live a good life, but they, 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 they struggle in how to do it. And it's because of, of just not understanding what salvation is, or what does salvation contain. It contains everything that God wants for me. <laughs> he said, I, I freely give you all things. We just read that in, in Romans. That is, but we, we need abundance of grace through our life to be able to reign. And that's what I want to end with. Go to uh, Romans 5, 15 through 17. This grace is an amazing thing. It's unmerited faith. I did nothing to earn it. And it's a part of my salvation. What could I do if I would use that, that same grace in my conscience to believe God that he's put away my sin? How could that change me as a, a person or how I treat other people? What could I do if I could use that grace in my labor? How would that increase uh, the labor of my hands? If that grace is so powerful that it can save me from sin, Hallelujah. what can it do to me in my physical life? That's the yes, point of making. Yes, Lord. If you start understanding that grace is powerful enough to to to, to thrust me into heaven, and you know that that's that, that's a, a, a major thing that grace can do through faith. What will it do in physical life? How do I use it to, to be to benefit off it from in physical life? Look at 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Now this is a free gift. This grace free is free. Gift. This, you, this faith is free. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more. Remember what we just read about much more. When you read much more, just let that soak in. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace which is by one man Jesus Christ if this grace was so uh, unique and so strong 
that it was able to save us from all the sin we're going to do till we die. Not just the sin we did before we got saved. Not just the sin we do when we're saved. But even the sin we do all the way in the future. But the sin that we we don't even know we're going we gonna to do yet. Yes, Lord. Guess what? The grace has already been provided mm -hmm. through the crucifixion. Hallelujah, Jesus. And this grace is so strong that God say uh, that it gives me eternal life. It's unmerited favor. I do nothing to earn it. Now I have to ask myself, how can I use that same grace in physical circumstance? Okay, my conscience is bothering me. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm full of worry. The Bible yes, says, uh, don't take no thought uh, in your statue about what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, what I'm going to put on. Now, I have to use grace to, to come out of that, that state. Open I have the to, door. I got to use grace to be able to overcome that thing. This grace will help me overcome my inner thoughts. Come on in. This, this grace is a grace by gift. Yes, Lord. And this came by one man, Jesus Christ, and it has abounded unto many. Yes, Lord. 16. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. It's a gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. And we already had many teasers about how we are being condemned by our yes, own country yes, and by Lord. others. But this grace even takes care of, take care of condemnation. You know what? He, he put grace that I may not be condemned when I have done wrong. But look, the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. This free gift that I got... When I accepted Christ, yes, Lord. it is it is also uh, need to be understood in physical life. How do I live out this free gift? Look at uh, 17. For by, if for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. And it's talking about when Adam sinned. He said, the day you eat, we just read, you, you should die thereof. But he, he told him everything was freely given to him. He could eat freely of all the trees of the garden. And we just read... That we can give, uh, what was it we just read in Romans 8 and 31 and 32? Amen. That he give us freely all things. Now, this death reigned by one man's sin, and that was Adam in verse 17. But you know what he say? He say that grace is much more than, 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 than uh, uh, sin. Grace is much more. This death reigned by one, the sin of Adam. Much more they which receive abundance of grace. So I, I need to really understand what happened to me when I got saved. Because yes, if I can, it says that I can reign in life. Hallelujah. If I receive the abundance of grace of everything I do in the physical, if, if I ask God, God, make me understand what does the abundance of grace do to my worry? What does the abundance of grace do to the labor of my hands? What does the abundance of grace uh, do? To uh, my, my livelihood, and, and to me seeking, I mean, to me need, needing to have things. If I can receive the abundant, and, and when did He give me this abundant grace? At salvation. He gave me this abundant grace that's going to carry me throughout my, my whole life, all my life. And of the gift of, remember, I told you righteousness is a gift. Yes, Lord. Righteousness is a faith gift, and you can read, I'm not going to go there, but you can read Romans 10 about this faith righteousness. I have to re re believe I'm righteous by faith, not by doing, by believing. But if I can receive the abundance of grace in my conscience for my worry, for in the labor of my hands, I just ask God, God, give me grace on my labor. Make me understand uh, how to have grace on my, the labor of my hands and make me understand my righteousness. And, and, it's, and, and what he wanted me to know, that I'm righteous at all times, no yes, matter Lord. what I'm doing or how I'll act. Because it's not me that's making myself righteous by uh, doing something, but just believing that I'm the righteousness of Christ. Mm, and became hallelujah. For me, that I may become the righteousness of Christ. That's what 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. And he said, you know, even by the righteousness of I mean, he, this gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Yes, so, Lord. if yes, I'm going to reign in life, I'm going to reign because of what happened to me at salvation. It ain't something uh, that I need to try to do in my own strength. 
But if I can remember I was saved from hell, I can, if I can remember I was saved from all my sin, and that same grace, that same faith, that same is that same, uh, the same tools I need to reign in physical life. Hallelujah. It'll even get in your speech. Yes. Because say, let your uh, uh, words be seasoned with grace. This grace is such a powerful tool to, to life that it, it'll be just ignorant not to, to, to learn more about it. He say, I can reign with the abundance of great grace through one Jesus Christ. So everything that you do in life needs to refer back to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. By grace, we are saved through faith. Yes, Lord. I need to find all those scriptures that's dealing with grace and faith. That's dealing with worry, fear, unbelief, doubt, love. And I need to understand, I need God, you say you will abundantly give me this grace. Yes, he will. And you know, it says, those that sow spam shall reap spam. Those that sow bound shall reap bound for God. Love that you were given. And they able to make all grace abound towards. This grace that gave me salvation is the same grace that I need to live the good life. That grace is what he said in, in uh, John. He said that I came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. More abundantly. What abundantly are you talking about? He's talking about grace. Thank He's you, talking Jesus. about the abundance of grace in that scripture. In, in John 10.10, 10, the thief came to steal and kill and destroy, but I came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. What is he giving me abundantly in life? Grace. Mm, my Lord. Through faith. Why? So my conscience can believe that uh, what he gave me is salvation was for all of life. It wasn't a one-time event just for me to just stay down there. You know, most people say, you know what, man, I can't wait till I get to him and there's no more bills, there's no more debt. <laughs> yeah, but what about right now? What do grace and faith do to you right now in the physical realm? What can it do? If it can do, get me into the eternal place with God. Yes, Lord. What can it do in the physical realm today? Look, it can do way more way than what more. you think it can do because your conscience is not on it. You know, the conscience is always on fear, unbelief, doubt. But what if my conscience become uh, filled with grace? Mm. Hallelujah. What if my conscience yes, become Lord. filled with, 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 with grace and faith? Yes, Lord. What if I live in such a great state in my conscience that I'm, I, I'm in a constant state of believing God? Mm. I'm believing God because He said. All things are possible to those that believe. Let's give a hand Thank you, Jesus. 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 We always want to take your read. Yes, God. You get a commitment. If anybody got a good testimony, this time, you can speak. Right there, we in the right It's in the mama room. It's in the mama room on the bed. Amen.